And I think you might have shown me this. Um, yep. You know, examples of tree stumps with pyramids on top of them. If you don't think that's a tree stump, I, you know, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. Um, you know, oh, it's just a mesa. It just happened that way. Well, here's yeah, an example. Here's an example of a mesa yeah, with, with growth rings. rings. Great picture. Right? Yeah. Really quick, um, since you brought up that picture, mm -hmm. and I had a little presentation ready. Um, we're getting low on time, so I'll just run right through it really quick. You um, can go as long as you want, but yeah. But um, I put together a thread a long time ago um, with the picture you showed. Um, this is Cairo. The pyramids of Egypt are built on top of tree stumps. Um, they did an analysis on the plateau that Giza's on, and they said that it had to be cut with a laser because it's so incredibly flat. Well, it just reminds me of the tree stumps we've talked about before, right? And why is that important? Well, um, when you look at the pyramids, um, and there's there's quite a few researchers that have hypothesized this, but this article is fantastic. And it's based on an author who wrote a book on the subject. But basically, the title of this article is The Great Pyramids of, of Giza or the Real's Noah's Ark. Even the very rooms and tunnels in which the chosen survivors of the deluge took refuge declared by Egyptologists to have been found at last. Um, there's a huge labyrinth under the Giza plateau. This was well explored and it was more of a public, uh, more public knowledge than it is today. Um, endless and endless tunnels, you know, hundreds of miles of tunnels under the, um, under Giza. And part of his analysis was he found, um, salt all over the pyramids and, um, but it only went, I believe it was a hundred feet from the top. And he said that the pyramids were buried under a salt ocean for several hundred, if not more than a thousand years. And this may seem um, a bit outlandish, but when you go through and study many of the Native American cultures, um, Middle America, Canadian, uh, Mesoamerican, South American, in fact, many of their um, stories and legends of some of these ruins that they don't know how were there, or that they do have some kind of cultural understanding, they describe them as places of refuge during the flood. Now, sometimes they would say, like in the Mississippi Delta, they had the same stories. They said that these were built um, for more than one purpose, but one of the main reasons was to survive fl a flood. Now, some may say that's the flooding of the Nile, but others, when you understand that ground level has risen considerably, and many of these pyramids go 50 20 100 or more feet under the ground so when these things were first constructed ground level was far lower so to say that it was just the flooding of a river makes no sense especially when you understand that many of the um, temples on the yucatan peninsula which have no flooding at all that is a complete limestone formation there are no rivers it's all underground streams the land doesn't flood it had to have been some kind of tidal wave or serious <clears throat> deluge perhaps the biblical one that we're discussing so yeah, these narratives relate to trees and i believe the subterranean again we're connecting a lot of dots here guys and due to time we're not going to be able to go super deep but I, i've hypothesized that the mining of veins and some of these cave systems which i've talked a lot about endlessly on many um episodes and Tomorrow I'll be doing another show and I'll be talking a lot about caves. They strike me as geological formations. Um, often you'll find coal and quartz and limestone and all these things intermingled, the things, same substances we've been discussing. And I think that these pyramids were, think of them like vault doors into the tree and that they were carving massive subterranean homes, cities out of the trees and they were using the naturally formed veins as you describe that form in trees that transport the sap in the water and using them in tunnels and obviously as me and you have talked before it'd be far easier to shape wood than stone and a lot mm. of stone um again i have a bunch of ruin ruins that they describe as petrified stone not our petrified tr wood not stone so there are petrified homes that have been carved from wood that have been turned to stone and they acknowledge this and right. i have some pictures here because 
I went into this in depth uh, in the last live stream also talking about the sandstone layers also right. because um, they could have been carved into when they were when they were still wood. Correct. But they also could have been carved into when they're sandstone with primitive mm -hmm. tools because sandstone is so soft. Much easier so than you, wood. Yeah. 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 But then uh, like Paul Cook has found lots of rendering. He's got, you know, pre-rendering and rendering and paint all those all these layers well if you were creating a, a sandstone ab abode that wouldn't that wouldn't be very comfortable because you're going to have a constant erosion you're constantly going to be dealing with sand and dust and inhaling that yeah, so the plaster they would have very they would have yeah they would have sealed it to protect to protect from it and right. uh, his his work is phenomenal i i i i think he's finding incredible stuff and uh, i have you know a lot of praise for him he's not He's not on board with with these theories about the the trees at all, and, and uh, you know maybe I think, maybe at some point he'll room, see enough that both. he'll start to open his mind. But yeah, I think it's both. yeah, it's both. He's, there's no doubt that he's finding loads of geopolymer. Also, I agree. yeah, no doubt. Yeah, um, it's a mix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then here's another clipping I made. The deluge has been described again by the Ute Indians, the Ute Indians of the Tahoe region, Utah, um, Tahoe, California, as well. The great spirit sent an immense wave across the continent from the sea, and this wave engulfed both the oppressors and the oppressed, all but a very small remnant. Then the taskmasters. Now, when you look into their mythology, who are the taskmasters? It's a very interesting subject, uh, one that I won't have time to get into. I'll let you make your own conclusions there. The taskmasters made the remaining people raise up a great pyramid so that they of the ruling caste should have a refuge in case of another flood. Um, you kind of see a lot of overlays here when we talk about subterranean worlds um i've mentioned many times in other interviews that the dumbs of military dumbs are corresponding to ancient um, cavernous worlds created by previous civilizations and you can think of the pyramid as like the old version of the vault you see the big giant safe doors um, built into the side of the mountain with all the tunnels and um, they're just kind of reconstituting reconstructing um, um fixing up um, what was already there, perhaps uh, adding on to it. Um, one more I wanted to get to. Um, Real quick while you're looking, um, you know, also going back to geology and mining terminology, they talk about artesian wells, right? Art is the word, that's the beginning of, of the word artery. So if, if you're talking about uh, water coming up from the waters of the deep, coming through channels, they call that artesian wells. So if you're building on top of a tree stump, why would you do that? Well, it's a solid foundation and it's probably got access to all kinds of permanent water sources if those root structures reached all the way down into the exactly. waters of the deep. Mm -hmm. So you're, it's, very, it's gonna be very strategic for, you know, and also the tree itself is an endless supply of nutrients so that, you know, if you can find a way of dealing with the lack of light in your underground tunnels, um, you're going to be able to to grow things forever down there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, um, this connects with my video I did with Dr. Longo on radium and spring water, how important that is because um, you can grow giant everything and anything you can imagine. Radium exists naturally in trees, <coughs> in guess where? In sap. Um, they were mining radium oh, from, yeah, from petrified trees. This is public record. Radium was found in petrified trees. So you're filtering the, 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 the natural artesian wells that were created by biogeological <laughs> life forms, not always, but in a lot of cases. And you have incredibly clean, pure water that has been impregnated with all kinds of amazing minerals and also radium. And yeah. these things together are going to grow amazing crops. Um, radium also impregnates into crystals and causes them to glow they will glow this is bioluminescence um and the picture i wanted to show on that as well <laughs> bioluminescence yeah. is just uh, yeah amazing i know we're touching on a million itself. yeah a million yeah. things when we do this Sono again sonoluminescence light when from we, yeah. sound when we do this again we'll we'll kind of do the mystical sci-fi stuff that i didn't get time to talk about but i show a few mm. pictures here and i've talked about avatar in other interviews um, I'm going to do a movie review eventually when I have time about that movie and how important it is. But essentially, you had all these cultures in these times of, of the giant trees, and everyone lived around the trees. 
So part of one of my articles here that unfortunately due to this, the glitchiness of, of Google Chrome wasn't shown. But basically, it, it, the article talks about during a hurricane, a farmer in Florida lost a cypress tree. And inside the, so cypresses can be hollow. I've talked about this on Old World Florida many times. A cypress can be hollow. In fact, most of them are hollow for a certain extent. Well, the tree, inside the tree was found 50 different animals, all alive. All the animals go inside of the cypresses during storms to survive. Why wouldn't humans do the same thing on a massive scale? Humans were living around trees. Um, we've talked about this before, Mike, me and you, and and uh, 13th Monkey, Mike, is episode one. Um, in the, the rainforest, in these large um, uh, vapor canopy-esque type environments, tropical areas, 90% of all life lives in and around the tree, in, around, and on the tree. This would be no different than the, than the ages we're discussing previously. Um, mankind grew up in and around and on and, and, and inside the tree. It lived on the tree. So the avatar reference is really important because I think this is kind of that uh, Akashic memory, the subconscious mind. Um, these, these things, I believe, are real. And in that movie where the, the invading parasitic race is coming to mine the mineral. And where is the mineral? It's at the base of the tree. Now, Mike, me and you have talked about this before, but many of these ancient giant trees sat on top of giant crystal caves. You actually visited the cave in California that we had discussed before. There, yeah. there was a crystal cave below it that, that they closed, of course. Um, but there's still a crystal cave in one of the, in a, in a California forest that you can still um, go under. I think that was the one you went to, correct? Yeah, Crystal Cave is the name of it. It's in the Sequoias. It's an incredible cave, and it's filled with all these just flowing layers of of marble and limestone and and you know crystalline 